Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we're about to solve are the ones that, that you will find on page number 103. Please turn to it. Page 103 and today is our lesson number 50. Today we'll be dealing with we'll be dealing with word problems. The very first one we have there is 257, 2.57. This says 5 less than the twice the length. As you can see, this is not a sentence. And because it is not a sentence, when we translate it, what we will have is not going to be an equation. An equation is so called because it has an equal sign. The comparable term for an equation in the language is the sentence. An equation is a sentence. This is not a sentence. And therefore, what we will have is not an equation, but an expression. Let's see what we can do. It says 5 less than twice the length. So if we were to use letter L to represent the length, 2 times L is twice the length. And then we need 5 less than that. So we subtract 5 from it. That is, that, that is it. This, is, this says 5 less than 2 times the length. It's an expression. It's not an equation. Let's do the next one. 2.58. It says the number is... I'll tell you what, let's do, let's do the next one. Let's do the next one on the top, and you will see the reason why I'm making a big fuss about the next one. Number 2.58 is an interesting one. You will see it in a second. It is, a, it, is, it is actually more than an interesting one. It's a funny one. As a matter of fact, it is almost bordering on hilarity, and you will see that in a second. A number is five less than the sum of the number and four. This is 2.58. Unless I misread it, unless I miscopied it, this is what it says. Let me double check just to make sure because this is. It says a number is, and now I'm reading it from the book verbatim. A number is five less than a number is five less than the sum of the number, sum of the number and four. That's what it says. So let's begin then. So sum of the number and four is this quantity right here. If we say x for the number, sum of the number, sum of the number and the four is this quantity right here. Is this quantity? A number is a number, which is what we are using letter x for. Is means equal. So what this says so far is that number is equal to the sum of the number and four. That's, it doesn't say number is equal to sum of the number and the four. It says some a number is five less than that. So whatever this quantity is, this number is equal to this number is is means equal. This number is five less than this quantity. So we have to subtract five from it. So what this says one more time a number, which, which we're using letter x to represent number in the book, they use letter n. It makes no difference. You can use any letter you want, any any symbol that you want to represent the unknown quantity. A number is five less. You see, five less. Five less is this part minus five. Five less than the sum of the number and four. And I'll show you why. I'll show you why this is this is nonsensical. This is silly. This is rubbish. But this is utter nonsense. I'll show you why in a second. If you look at this quantity, it says x plus 4 minus 5. x plus 4 minus 5 is x equal x minus 1. This quantity reduces to x plus 4 minus 5. As you can see, it will reduce to x minus 1. So what this, what this sentence is saying is that we have a number such that that number is equal to 1 less than itself. Well, that's bloody nonsense. No number can be 1 less than itself. This is utter nonsense. Somebody did not do a very good job in proofreading this bloody thing. And this is not the first time, by the way. And this is just the math portion. I do not deal with the grammar portion or the reading portion or the science portion. I have just been doing math problem 
today as I speak, today as I speak happens to be September 15th of 2013. I began that process. I began that process. This process on 23rd, 23rd of August last month on the 23rd. So it's, it's the last three weeks that I've been working on it, and we've been solving only the math problem. So all I know about is the math portion. I don't. I'm a math tutor. That's what I do for a living. I do not. I, I have not dealt with the science portion or the grammar portion or the reading portion. In the math portion alone, so far, this is the fifth misprint we have found in the book. Fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. This is nonsense. This is rubbish. But anyway, that's what he says. Let's move on then to the next page, page 104. A number cannot be one less than itself. No number can be one less than itself. It is illogical. It is illogical. Page 104, shall we? But anyway, that's what he said. And if you have watched all the other videos from day one, then you know all the other misprints because as I encounter a misprint, I, I share that with you. We are on page number 104 now, doing 2.59. Let's take a look at it. 2.59, it says, more than one answer is possible. All right, okay, more than one answer is possible. So here's what it is. We have, we have to translate this thing into, translate the following. Translate the following equation into a sentence. That's what an equation is. As I said before, a comparable term, or perhaps I didn't, a comparable term for a sentence. In, 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 in languages, in any language, so language is made up of sentences, the comparable term in mathematics is, is an equation. An equation is a sentence. So here we have something written, well, we'll be, given something, we'll be given something in the language of mathematics. Our job is to translate whatever the information that they give us from the language of the mathematicians into English language. That's what it is. Let's do this, shall we? Translate this equation, and the equation is this right here. How do we translate this thing? Well, the first thing we notice is that it is nine times some quantity. Nine times, nine times, nine times what? Nine times, not nine times the number, not nine times the number, but nine times four, four less than a number, any number. That's what it is. This n here represents some unknown quantity. We don't know what that quantity is. Some unknown quantity is a number. n is a number. So, so far it reads like this, so far it reads, so far our sentence reads, 9 times 4 less than a number, 4 less than a number, now we need a verb, the verb is right here, this is your verb, this is translated as is, equal sign means is, are, was, were, that's, that's what is is, but that's what an equal sign is, is what, is this quantity, and what does this represent, n divided by 2 represents, represents, Half the number. Voila, there you go. N was our quantity here. N was the number that we're talking about. When you divide by 2, what we are left with is half the number. There you go, there's your sentence. That's it, we're done. Full stop. Or as you call it, period. 9 times 4 less than a number. 9 times 4 less than a number is half the number. That's it, we're done. Let's move on then. Let's do the practice problem. Let's do the practice problem. I'll get out of you. Get out out of your way in a second. Uh, for a second. Let's do the practice problem one more time. Nine times four less than a number is half the number. That's it. Practice problems on the same page, page 104. The very first one says, translate the following into an inequality. All right. And what they give us is this. 5 is less than 
less than what? Half a number. Half a number. Five is less than half a number. That's very straightforward. Five, five is just five, is less than, there is your inequality. It's not an equal sign. It's not an equality. It doesn't say five is half a number. It says five is less than. So less than is this. Five is less than, less than what? Less than half a number. Any old number. Just pick a symbol, any symbol that you like. I'm going to use letter X and divide by two. That's it. You're done. That's all there is. Five is less than half a number. Let's do the next one, shall we? We are done with this one. Number two. Number two says. And number two, they give us an, an, an inequality, and our job is to translate that inequality into English language. Well, let's do it then, shall we? What does this say? This, this says four times some numbers. 4n means four, four times, four times a number. A number is your n, any old number. Four times a number, this part means is greater than, is greater than or equal to. You see how efficient the mathematics is? Because all of this thing, one, two, three, four, five, six words, it took half a dozen words to express what the mathematician would simply express as this. Is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to what? Is greater than or equal to, is greater than or equal to the number. Is greater than or equal to the number. Is this correct? Did we do a good job? No, it doesn't say four times, it does not say four times a number is greater than or equal to the number itself, but it's n plus 10. It's not n, it's n plus 10. It's not, it's greater than or equal to the number itself, but the number, the number, and then 10 more. How do we write that? So we have to say 10 more than the number, not the number, but 10 more than the number. There you go. 10 more than the number. Now we have it. So one more time, what it says is that 4 times, 4 times a number, 4 times a number is greater than or equal to, that's the equal part right here, is greater than or equal to what? Greater than or equal to 10 more. See, that's plus 10 means 10 more than the number. There you have it. That's our answer. That was the end of it. Tomorrow we'll do the next problem where we'll, we'll, where we'll solve a linear equation. But for today, that was the end of the show. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.